greetings and welcome to an LGR thing and look what I've got today. Cardboard boxes. More specifically, IBM cardboard boxes, as you might be able to tell from the little logos here and there. And what's inside there? Well, oh, it's something super cool and something I've always just dreamed of doing and that is getting a vintage IBM computer, a PC 5170 AT in this case, and opening it, setting it up and, and powering it on for the first time since it left the factory decades ago. And so I actually was able to find this from a guy on eBay who apparently has access to a warehouse of these things. It just looks amazing. What I would give to walk through there and see a site like that. Just holy crap. But yeah, I bought one and here it is. It's all right here. This one in particular was made in 1988. We're going to open it up and set this thing up in a moment, but uh, just in case you're not familiar with these machines, it's a 286 machine running at 8 megahertz. This one has 512k of RAM, like a 30 meg hard disk, 1.2 meg disk drive, and the thing is this one doesn't actually have a video card or even an operating system. According to the seller uh, on his listing on eBay, he says this computer was manufactured at a time when the IBM dealer or authorized reseller installed additional options and set up the product for the end user. So if you were wanting to buy an IBM AT in 1988 in this case, then you wouldn't actually go to IBM directly. You would go to some sort of middleman service dealer or authorized retailer and they would get it from IBM, set it up for you with all the options that you chose, and uh, this is how it came before it got to the end user. So I'm going to sort of play the part of that middleman authorized IBM person and install a video card, an operating system, some other software. I, I don't even know what else yet because I'm not even entirely sure what's in here. I am so excited. So uh, let's do this. I am so ready to dive into this thing. Let's do it. Okay, I've got a box within a box here. Nice. Like that little message there, units manufactured for USA and Canada require UL listed accessories. Uh, the other things, which is in the other box, we'll be opening after this. You can see the uh, tape is starting to deteriorate, which makes sense, it's been on there so long. It's a really cool IBM box though, look at that, personal computer, AT system unit. This one was made in the UK, one of their Scotland assembly plants if I am correct. I am keeping this box. <laughs> it's so cool. Uh, this is a magic moment. It really is. This is the first time it's been opened since assembled. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the uh, styrofoam has actually melted to the cardboard a bit. There we go. Oh wow. That is fantastic. It looks like a few elements have gotten in here and just sort of, you know, leaked onto that, but not bad. Now, here we go. First up, we have the IBM inventory checklist. And yeah, keep in mind, this was not going to go directly to the end user. This was, um, you know, for distributors and retailers and stuff like that. So here's it. It says what it's supposed to come with, which uh, it should. <laughs> And yeah, it's just in a bunch of different languages. That, that's it, really. It's just a list of three things. If anything is missing or damaged, please consult your place of purchase. So we have this little uh, back plate thing here. Well, it's not little, it's, it's friggin' huge. It's got some Velcro, Velcro branded Velcro on the back here. Looks like this goes over the I.O. plate and um, just sort of covers up like the screws and sort of extraneous stuff. Yeah, that's new to me. I've never seen one of these. Okay, that was simple enough. <laughs> and the rest of it's still stuck in the bottom there. I don't know if it was meant to be like that. Maybe it's glued in place, I'm not sure. Oh, 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 how cool is this? This is the first time that it has seen the light of day in, man, almost, almost 30 years. Three decades, close enough to it. So yeah, you can actually see here, there's the, uh, the Made in UK sticker, which is of course gonna be removed you know, by the time it gets to the user, I would assume. A nice little key lock here, indicators. And um, yeah, it, it does have a little bit of, not damage, it's just gonna need cleaning. Because I assume in whatever conditions it was stored in, uh, it just sort of got this mottled effect going on, uh, which happens anytime something is stored for multiple decades and isn't a perfectly sealed box, because you could see that tape 
was perishing. This right here is a wonderful moment though. So this disk drive, um, they always came with this bit of uh, cardboard in there. First time it's been taken out since leaving the factory. This is to keep the heads from knocking around and getting damaged during shipment. I'm gonna put that back. Oh, yes. There's that delightful power switch. Mm. Oh, brand new. Like it had an extra click in there. It has now been de-clicked. Looks like the cork feet on the bottom are uh, its all still in place. The glue hasn't completely melted away. Uh, some of it has started to. <laughs> okay, this is interesting. So it is, of course, manufactured in the UK, made for sale in the US. This is gonna have to be switched to, uh, there we go, US voltage. <laughs> I love that, 230 volt, question mark, huh? Yeah, so you can switch it back and forth between the voltages of the different countries. Uh, 5170 little logo right here is sort of sliding downward. The glue didn't quite hold. Uh, but everything else looks to be absolutely, I mean, brand new, perfect condition. Nothing else seems to be melting, which is good. I assume that it maybe got some sort of heat exposure uh, over time, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's a good sign though. Things aren't completely, you know, melted. It was made in Greenock, Scotland, the United Kingdom. Interesting too that it doesn't actually have this plate filled. It leaves it open. I assume uh, that's where they expect the video card to go because I mean, that's kind of a necessary thing. It does not have any video output. It just has the basic serial interface over here. Yeah, being the age that this is, even though it is brand new, I still want to check the insides to make sure nothing's like you know, burst or falling apart. And I assume it has an internal battery right here. I'm gonna check that as well. You know, capacitors, things like that. I mean, it's been three decades. There's no telling what's gone on inside of this, especially if some sort of exposure happened because of that uh, tape failing on the box. <sighs> yeah, it's locked. Uh, so the key lock is engaged, which means I, I can't actually take the case off of it yet. So I guess we're gonna go ahead and open the accessories pack. All right. <laughs> I should have figured. I mean, it would probably be locked if it was being, uh, you know, shipped and stuff. So. Oh, it says open this box first. <laughs> I probably should have done that. Intriguingly, this one says made in the USA. So I guess the system unit was made in Scotland and just this was made here. Oh, this is exciting because this is where the Model M is going to be. I'm almost more excited about touching a brand new Model M, <laughs> to be honest. Oh, here we go. We got a little graphic. Just in case you don't know how to open a box, IBM has got you covered. It's as easy as one, two, three. Oh, 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 oh they're sealed. Look how perfect. Oh. Welcome to the world of personal computing with IBM. So this is the uh, little introduction guide. I've never, ever seen one of these in person. Here we go. Oh, so this is the AT guide to operations. So this is, you know, the computer's documentation. It should have some uh, diagnostic disks and stuff. Wow, it's just, I mean, it should be perfect condition, but it is, it's, this has survived much better. Um, as far as not being exposed to the elements. Uh, really cool. Original power cord here. I always like these because you can plug the monitor uh, right into the back of this. So it's like a two-sided thing, like what you'd see on Christmas lights. These are just nice. Oh, man. Ooh, keyboard templates. What? Oh, it's, it seems a shame to open this, but... I'm freaking going to, that's why I bought this thing. Oh my, that is so cool. So yeah, I mean, it's it's keyboard templates. So the idea with this is you just place it on top of the keyboard and uh, write the name of the application here and then write what the commands do for these keys. And oh, how generous, it comes with three and they're double-sided. Six whole applications right here. This is a religious experience as a keyboard guy. It's a brand new Model M. I, I, I can't even say the name, but this is a Model M. It's, it hasn't been touched. Oh, 
Oh, oh, oh. It feels so fresh. I, it smells fresh. It smells new. It smells. Oh my word, it smells like a new car. I'm not even kidding. It smells like a new car, a brand new car. You're gonna have to give me a moment. You can see the uh, date code there, the 5th of October, 1988. Part number 1390131. Oh man, this, this is just one lovely Model M. Ah. Okay, what am I gonna type on it first? This is pure sex. Oh. Oh my goodness, this is like pure treasure. Wow, so here is the uh, cable, of course. Um, it has an AT connector on the end there, which this is an AT, so naturally. Fujikura Thailand. Now you can actually still buy these things like new from Unicom, I believe, but um, you know, the fact that this one in particular has been sitting here for nearly 30 years. So only one question remains here. Where are the keys? They gotta be in the guide to operations or something. Maybe the startup guide. I'm gonna open the startup guide. Welcome to IBM. Oh dear. We appreciate your expression of confidence in selecting IBM and want you to know we've made every effort to provide you with a useful and reliable product at an affordable price. Mm, yes, so this is talking about the IBM sales locations, which, uh, you know, makes sense. Oh, check it out. There's their Charlie Chaplin dude, as they had going on at the time. The library. This is the most IBM looking product catalog I've ever seen. Uh, it's just a crap load of text. And really, really boring. Wow, this, I mean, you know, that's IBM for you. But look at all that software. Look at all the software. Daggone. Ooh, it's still crinkly. IBM Personal Computer Systems. Well, here's a better looking catalog. It at least has color. So, uh, oh, it folds out. You got the AT, the XT. Got some cool looking little... Uh, spec sheets there. Ooh, this is really cool. The original PC, the portable personal computer right there. Don't have a portable yet. PC Junior. Of course I have one of those. And all the different uh, peripherals and accessories. Disk drives, expansion units, graphics cards. All the different things. Mmm, that crinkliness. Yeah, this still smells like, this This smells like one of those, um, if you've ever been to a car dealership and they have those brand new, like, really nice product catalogs, magazines, uh, it smells like that. It's a, it's a specific kind of, like, glossy ink smell. It's a lovely smell. Look at all these things. Oh, I want all of them, even though I have a lot of them. I actually don't have any IBM printers, though. At least none that work. I would love to get one of them that's, like, top of the line for its day. Oh, here we go. We have a uh, customer response form. Also very clinical looking. So we got the machine type, the serial number, date purchased, purchased from. So here's the thing, seller information. The seller set up and test your IBM product with diagnostics prior to delivery. I guess we should do that once we set it up. Uh, work, uh, you know, problems. Okay, well, there's no key in there. So it's gotta be in the hardware reference library. Mm. I love these. The cloth outside here. I really like collecting them. I don't have an AT one. Well, I do now, but this is my first. Oh, everything is sealed inside as well. It's an IBM technical directory, so this is another catalog for the uh, stiff. The guide to operations. That, of course, is the manual. It's going to go in here. Got some setup information. Here are the disks. Exploring the IBM Personal Computer AT, we'll have to look at that. And also the Diagnostics program, which makes sense. Where is the key? This is ridiculous. Oh, well, here's some information. This talks about storing the spare key in a safe place. Cannot be used unless it's unlocked. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> so I'm trying to, trying to find it. Maybe it's in here. Where is the key? Not in here. Hmm. 
That's a lovely power cord. Yeah, see that? These are quite handy. Okay, maybe it says in here. And there's a section on ordering another key, but uh, it, it didn't say where the key is. <laughs> uh, yeah. It goes in there, how quaint. And eh, these separators will go in there in order, but I'm just gonna stick them in the back for now. And we'll organize that later. Where is the key? Ah, finally, the key. This is both keys, awesome. Ugh. These vital keys, man. Yeah, do not duplicate. <laughs> uh huh. It's no wonder these things got lost so easily and they're like so hard to find. They are kind of special, but I mean, I'm sure if somebody knew what they were doing, they could duplicate them. There's a serial number on the back. Lowe and Fletcher, Bilston Limited, England. Interesting because uh, the key design itself comes from the Chicago Lock Company, but I guess they just had, you know, whatever company make it locally whenever they uh, made the system. Oh God, that's so heavy. Okay, here we go. That's it. Yep. This is nice. Look how nice it is. This is some glorious stuff. Um, and yeah, there is the battery going right in here. In fact, it hasn't been plugged in yet. I find that interesting. I'm probably still going to replay this, uh, replace this with something else. This is a little uh, lithium battery, six volt Delio. What I'd be most concerned about is the caps in the power supply because I've had these things go bad um, with other AT and AT compatible systems. And they just poof as soon as you turn them on, even if they're new. So um, I'm gonna check that in more detail. And, you know, a couple of the other things, they, they can go bad, but I'm not seeing anything bulging or leaking or looking weird at all so uh, hopefully it'll just work and then uh, we're gonna start installing some things in here a uh, video card maybe another thing or two replace the battery fix up some of the like you know logos and stuff that are coming unglued and of course install an operating system and run some diagnostics and games and ah, i'm so happy so many cool features with this look at that original 30 meg hard disk <laughs> type 20. that is an absolute monster i mean this thing is like yeah, it's huge. It's a full high drive. Time to take the sticker off, even though I do like it for historical purposes. I am, I am going to keep it. It messes with the aesthetic. There we go. Hmm. A little bit of glue residue, but we'll just use some Goo Gone and that'll be fine. You put that right here in this book for safekeeping. Oh yeah. Just using a damp sponge here to get rid of some of that weird orangey oxidization. It's working nicely. The power is gonna go right in here, so this sticker has got to go. Switch this over to the right voltage. And the little 5170 badge is gonna go right here. Just removed it, used some Goo Gone. Just used a bit of Loctite glue there, and that should be okay. So yeah, first order of business is this lithium battery here by Panasonic. I'm just gonna use the one it came with for now, I, mainly because I'm just curious to see if it works. I doubt it after almost 30 years, but we will see. Another option is to use one of these. Here's like a Tataran 3.6 volt. Um, these things are really common in a lot of different CMOS battery setups, but as you'll see, this is 3.6 volt and not pure six volts. So I've heard this doesn't actually save everything in the BIOS for an IBM AT. So I probably don't want to use that. And uh, then there's also like these four AA holders, which will send out a full six volt. And it's really easy to replace AA's of course. So I do want to get one of these. I just don't have one on hand. And yes, these do work. You don't need to use lithium because the AT doesn't actually send a recharge signal to the battery. So in a way using lithium is kind of pointless. You may as well just use something easily replaceable. Next of course is the question of the video card and 
after some thinking about how I want this thing to look, I decided to use uh, this Paradise Higa 2 EGA card. I've actually used this in uh, another video, which I'm sure I'll probably link to at the end of this one. But yeah, this is EGA, so it'll do CGA and EGA and I think some mono of some kind. But, uh, you know, at the same time, while I do want to upgrade this with a, you know, with a proper VGA card from like 1988 to make it really appropriate, I don't have a VGA monitor that I think really fits the aesthetic. I mean, I do. I have PS2 monitors, but I like the way this looks with the 51.5 series of monitors. So I'm going to attach this with a 5154 EGA monitor. I mean, I guess I may as well install it here. I just noticed this is an 8-bit ISA slot and these others are 16. I mean, this is an 8-bit card, so I may as well. I might just be missing it, but I'm not seeing that big dip switch array that was on the PC and XT. So maybe I don't need it. I do, however, see a blank spot for the 8287 math coprocessor. I want to get one of those at some point because at this point, it's just the 286. Graphics card should be in here somewhere. There it is, EGA. Honestly, it looks like it's covered by the setup program, which is good. That's that's quite a handy upgrade from the um, from the PC and the XT, I gotta say. And there's a spot about the uh, math coprocessor. It's not like necessary or anything, obviously, but I don't know. I like math copros. Really, I mean, that's it for now. I don't want to load up too much stuff in here uh, yet. You know, like I want to add a sound card, like probably an ad lib or something, but uh, I'm just going to do this for now because it's about the most, you know, simple kind of setup just to see how it all works. Yeah, time to set this thing up. This whole thing. Uh, this right here smells like an office store. This still smells like a new car. I've got to let you know what everything smells like. It's important. I don't know if you noticed or not, but yeah, there's no port for a mouse exactly in the back. Just the keyboard. This is before PCs came standard with a mouse still. You can plug in a serial mouse, which I probably will, but I mean, that was still considered like an additional accessory, not like a must-have. Unlike this keyboard. Well, which is a must-have in every way. See? Doesn't that fit nicely? On the other hand, I know some people are going to disagree, so let me show you the other monitor that I'm considering. At least once I install a VGA. And that is one of these IBM PS2 series VGA monitors. I don't know, I mean, this fits the look as well. It's all IBM stuff, and this is closer to the 1988 time period, but the AT is from 1984, even though mine is from 88. So I want to go with the EGA one for now. We'll see about, you know, another video. Okay, just about ready to go here. I'm going to check the manual like a responsible person and, um, you know, make sure that everything is all set up, which just says to do all that I just did. Plug everything in and the setup program on the diagnostic diskette to uh, do things like set the time and make sure it knows what kind of stuff is in there and it'll check the battery and all sorts of things. So that is next, and that's going to be the disc at the back here. Mmm, this all smells so wonderfully new. All right. Make sure this is ready to go. Monitor powered on. You take the protective disc sleeve thingy out of there. <laughs> Have this ready to go and hope this thing doesn't blow up or something. This is the first time it's been powered on. Like, legitimately, my first time ever even doing the Switch. And this thing's first time in like 30 years. Here we go. Oh, yes. Okay, run setup. We know that 512 is okay. I hear the, yeah, that's the standard beep. Press F1, I did. We should, I should have put that in there. Whoops. Um, let me reload the disc. Wow. Okay. Okay, it is loading the disc. That is what I meant to do the first time. I got excited there and I forgot to even put the disc in the drive. Yay! Okay, have you completed running this program since connecting the battery? No. All right, enter the current date. What the hell is today? I forgot. <laughs> 2017, and it is 2.09. That'll be 14, 
09, I don't know, 25 seconds. That is correct. All right, uh, this is the information, locate the foldout. Yeah, that's the little thingy that it came with. Okay, it's asking us to refer to this <laughs> little thing at the back here where um, you actually put in all the different types and stuff. And uh, you know how I looked at the hard disk earlier and saw that it was type 20? That's one of the things we're probably going to need here because yeah, these, these drives are known by type. You don't necessarily go into like a BIOS thing and put in all the stuff or it doesn't auto detect it. Uh, so that is correct for the disk drives, floppy disk drives. This is the hard disk. We have one fixed disk. And yeah, this is type. It's asking for 1 through 47. We saw that it was a type 20. That is correct. Primary display comes on when you turn on the system power switch. Yes is correct. That is correct too. 512K RAM. No expansion memory. Not yet. <laughs> and all of that looks correct. Color display and all that stuff. Okay. Stand by while it resets. Let's see what happens. This is so cool. Having one of these things going for the first time since it left the factory floor. Just, mm. I didn't even check the drive rails to see if they needed to be lubed. It sounds okay. All of this is so clunky and loud, but not in a way that it sounds broken. I really love that. Okay, here we go. This is what I was hoping for. So this is all the stuff you can do. <laughs> it's just like preparing the system for moving. That will park the hard disk drive heads. So at this point, now that it's turned on, I don't want to move it again without first parking that. Otherwise the platter and the head might connect and cause problems. So that's a thing. You can do that from here. You can run the setup again, copy and format disks. I wanted to run the system checkout just because I don't need to. I mean, it's new, everything should be fine, but I like seeing it do its thing. So it has, de it has detected what's there, EGA. You got the serial parallel thing going on. And uh, disk drive, 512, yeah, that's all correct. This is kind of what it was seeing earlier. Do you want to test your system unit key lock? Yes, no. Yeah, that sounds fun. Uh, sure. Lock the system unit key lock, okay. Unlock. Yay! Which shape is your main enter key? Oh. Yep, everything is perfect. I'm gonna try exploring the IBM personal computer and it booted to basic. I am so ready to explore this IBM personal computer. Oh, look at that, how nice. This looks a bit like the IBM PC Junior's testing thingy. Exploring the PCAT. IBM has done cool things. Stay tuned for more information. I guess I will. It's my computer. This program has pages and chapters just like a book. Holy nuts! It's a book on a computer. That'll never catch on. Press either one of the page down keys at any time to see the next page. Oh. Haha. <laughs> oh, I went too far back. Well, oh, welcome to FunWriter, the greatest show in word processing. Even if you've never used a word processor before, you'll like this one. Besides being fun, it's great keyboard practice. Nice. It's got hearts. All right. I'm not sure I'd call this fun, IBM. Uh, it was radio. Ah! It's telling me stories. Oh, this is fun. I take it back, IBM. It's real fun. Well, yeah, that's because I took the disk out of there. <laughs> disk read error. All right, so next up, we've got to install PC-DOS. It's not MS-DOS, it's PC-DOS, IBM's version. And then this is version 3.30, which uh, would be the contemporary one for when this machine was made and would have been sold had it sold and not sat in a warehouse for 30 years. All right, well, a change of venue and uh, a change of software. I was trying to format this thing, you know, like F-Disk and stuff, get the DOS partition going, uh, but it didn't work. And I'm like, what? And so I went looking around online and someone finally told me, hey, did you do like low-level formatting, you know, like initialization and stuff? 
I'm like, oh crap, no. I mean, it's a brand new drive. So this thing has to like lay down the tracks and all this stuff, sectors and everything. So that's what it's doing now. I'm using Speed Store version 6.5. And uh, hopefully this will take care of my problems because I formatted it and it was zero megabytes. I didn't even format it. It wouldn't let me format it. I was just laying out the basic DOS partition. This is something that you have to get separately. It's either the advanced diagnostics disk or something third party like Speed Store. And uh, it's not a big pain as long as you have another computer to write this stuff. But something to keep in mind, even with this thing being brand new, you know, this is why you have like a uh, IBM representative taking care of business. Because otherwise, this is such a huge pain. <laughs> you don't want to do any of this as a consumer. So yeah, I'll let this go and see what happens. Oh, good. Well, that seemed to work. It's now uh, creating an MS DOS partition. And uh, I like this better than F disk because it actually shows the process. Oh, good. All right, so C is finally showing up. Uh, so we should be able to just install DOS now, hopefully. So you actually do that with the select command in this case. C is the drive we're installing it to. That should work. And now we need a country code and a keyboard code. And this is uh, actually going to be in the DOS manual here. So I'm in the United States, so it's 001 US. Ooh, how exciting. This is the first time this computer has ever had DOS installed onto it. This does actually come with uh, two disks. So there's the DOS startup one right there that it's using now. And here's the operating system one. Uh, both of them are on 360K, five and a quarter inch disks. Although it does also come with uh, this one here that combines the two on a 720K disk, uh, three and a half inch. So that's nice. Obviously don't have a three and a half inch drive in there yet, but I do have this brand new uh, Sony one, which is actually, uh, I think, made, manufactured to sort of fit that drive bay really nicely and fit the color scheme and aesthetic of the AT. So I'll probably put that in there later. Oh, and by the way, I did figure out that the, the battery that it came with does work. Um, Go figure, 30 year old battery is still holding the charge. So I'll leave it in there for the time being, at least until I get a replacement uh, suitable for it. But yeah, I thought that was pretty fascinating that it held the charge as I moved locations after like a couple hours and there we go. It is uh, booted up nicely. So we've got it running straight off of the uh, hard disk, which is pretty excellent. Okay, it's time to try something fun, a blank disk. It's not blank at all, I just haven't written anything on it. Copy a couple games over from my Windows 98 PC, and hopefully they will uh, run nicely on here. So, Commander Keen 1, Invasion of the Vorticons shareware episode, and CD Man, the first edition shareware thing for that. So, uh, yay! In a way, I would like to test something more involved, even like Commander Keen 4 or Wolfenstein 3D, because those will work on a 286. It just, well, it comes down to the RAM. Uh, <laughs> This doesn't have much. I mean, 512K, there's probably like 200 and, I don't know, 50K or something maybe available to uh, games and stuff. So, gotta pick stuff kind of carefully here because until I get some sort of RAM upgrade put into this, uh, 512K is just kind of a downer. <laughs> Key one. This is the first thing that I am going to run on here. Out of memory. Well, man, I was really hoping that would work. Well, I guess we'll just try CD Man. <laughs> well, this is officially the first game I'm running on here. <laughs> Tried to run Keen, but don't have enough memory. This, on the other hand, I mean, it just looks nice. It looks cool. Colors aren't really uh, coming across on this camera very well, but I assure you, it's super crisp. I mean, this is just, these are cool monitors. The 51, 54 here. Uh, let's just start it, see what happens. It supposedly adjusted itself to the Wow, that's too slow. Oh yeah, that is much better. Sweet. Oh man, super nostalgic. And this PC speaker is so loud. I love it. <laughs> it is like, it's echoing here in my living room. Just 
filling the house with beeps and bloops. Well, that's, uh, that's pretty much it for the moment. This video is getting really long, but you know, it's working and uh, it's awesome. I mean, man, what a great keyboard. <laughs> Bad commander file name. No, love me. This is such a cool thing. What a neat computer and what just to have it brand new like this, 30 years, unboxed, brand new, working perfectly. I mean, seriously, absolutely perfectly. Even the battery still works. Uh, man, <laughs> this is awesome. I'm sure I'll do some other videos in the future um, doing some upgrades, like I wanna add a disk drive. I would like to add an AdLib sound card. I would like to add uh, RAM upgrades. You know, maybe I'll just do like an upgrade special because as it is now, I just wanted to get it out, you know, running basically and uh, doing its own thing. Um, thank you to the guy that sold this to me. I mean, you know, he didn't like give me any special offers or anything. I, I just bought it. I didn't tell him who I was, but uh, thank you regardless. You know, I'm glad these things are being saved and, and given good homes, even if, you know, th this costs $500. So it's a bit of a premium. I know I'm one of the lucky few, but that's why I wanted to share it with you because I think that it's such a cool thing. And I hope you do too. So yes, thank you very much for watching.